Hey guys, Sasha from Mobile Geeks here. And if you wonder why there's a hole over there on the desk, um, I'm not in our ordinary video studio. I'm in the normal office. We're still working on a setup in the video studio. Uh, so, but this should be the very last video. And I gave the honor to the new Samsung, oh no, watch out. Samsung Artif Smart PC 500T. Windows 8 tablet convertible netbook substitute. Mm -hmm. Whoever came up, listen folks, it's Samsung. Whoever came up with this name, Samsung Artif Smart PC. Like uh, any customer would just uh, run into a Best Buy and is asking for, I want to buy the Samsung Artif Smart PC Windows 8 tablet or convertible. Uh, why don't you just call it Samsung Artif and um, use an S for the Intel Atom version and use a core, uh, for the Core i maybe an X like, like, like HEC did with their HEC 1X and HEC 1S which is of course not running on a Core I on a, on a Intel Atom. But anyways, I don't want to confuse you with uh, simple product names, but I think, you know what, this is just a little bit easier to remember than Samsung Artif Smart PC 500T. Anyways, um, I'm, 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 stop, I'm going to stop ranting now about our product names and dive right into our review of this device. That's an 11.6 inch um, tablet, Windows 8 tablet, running on an Intel Atom uh, Clover Trail platform. That's the um, Z2760, which means it's a dual core uh, running at 1.8 gigahertz, but it also comes with hyper threading so that um, theoretically, not only theoretically, you can run four threads on it. And you can also see this in your, in your task on device manager. Um, it comes with two gigabytes of RAM. It has a 64 gigabyte built-in storage, flash storage, or an SSD. But it, it runs Windows 8. This is not Windows RT, which is a huge advantage over Windows RT, of course, because it can run all your desktop apps, all your notebook apps on there. Uh, what you can't do on Windows RT, and that's the main reason why I just can't recommend Windows RT right now. It is just um, the average user is, is so confused when they're buying a system that looks like Windows. It looks like what they're using on their desktop. It looks like what they're using on their notebook. And then they just try to install a Firefox browser or maybe uh, one of their games or a Chrome browser or whatever application and it's not working. So uh, Microsoft has been definitely missing to educate their customers about this. So it's kind of sad to see that. Plus, what also kinder makes me not recommend Windows RT right now is the lack of performance. Um, even this Intel Atom dual core here, which is definitely not the fastest x86 processor out there, is just driving circles around the Tegra 3 or um, a Qualcomm S4 Pro. So anyways, um, let's, uh, let's, let's stop picking on the competitors and let's talk a little bit more about this device. Um, 11.6, I told you already, uh, it comes with a resolution of 1366 by 768. And what is different and what is almost the same, not only almost the same, it is the same as on the Galaxy Note 10.1. It comes with a, a Wacom digitizer and the S Pen, which is here on the side. Let me just grab this and show you. There we go. So uh, with this digitizer and the S Pen, it offers you uh, 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity. So for those guys, for all these artists, for people who love to doodle, draw, paint, all the things that I can't do at all because I just have no talent for this, um, this might be a device that you should consider. Samsung is really pitching this creativity theme. They've been doing this already on the Galaxy Note 1, Galaxy Note 2, and the Galaxy Note 10.1. Now they're bringing this whole experience to the Windows 8 world with the Samsung Smartive, Smartive, that's a good one. <laughs> Samsung Smartive PC, Samsung Artive Smart PC. There we go. Um, yeah, let's take a look at the tablet first and uh, get rid of the keyboard for the beginning and let's start here on the left side with a micro HDMI. That's a rocker for your volume, um, a jack for your headset, power button. Um, oh yeah, you can switch out the accelerometer. There's a full USB 2.0, not a 3.0. There's stereo microphones. Um, 
We have a micro SD card slot which can handle micro SDXC cards up to 64 gigabyte, which is really decent. There's nothing here. Well, there's this little bay for the S Pen. And this is kind of interesting because um, this is a, a dock connector, an electromagnetic one. And you know what? Um, I think it's absolutely brilliant. I'm going to show you why. Give me, give me a second. Connect it for your PSU. We have a two megapixel camera here on the front and there is a Windows 8 hardware button which always takes you back when you're on the desktop or back to um, the live tiles. And on the back, last but not least, we also have a camera, which is an eight megapixel camera. And it also comes with an LED flashlight. I tell you what, you can take some very decent pictures with this camera. It's almost on the same level as um, the ASUS VivoTap Smart or an Infinity Prime, which are offering one of the best or even the best cameras that you can get in a tablet so far. Um, overall, you know what, this kind of looks like a brushed aluminum. I tell you what, this is, this is as plastic as it can get. Uh, I, don't, I don't really like this feeling. I would kind of prefer um, a soft kind of rubberish plastic uh, back surface like on the uh, Google Nexus 7 or on the Nexus 10 or even on the Vivo Tab Smart from ASUS. Uh, it's also quite heavy. This is like, uh, in US it's like 1.6, 1.7 pounds, 750 grams. Um, just as a comparison, an iPad 4 is 650 grams and I think already the iPad 4 is bulky and heavy. Um, the Nexus 10 is around 600 grams and the Vivo Tab Smart from ASUS is 580 grams, which is a huge difference. So this is, um, yeah, not the tablet that you want to hold in your hands while you're playing um, a, a, a racing game for 45 minutes. Well, maybe, maybe when you are the governator or the ex-governator, that will work out. Anyways, uh, it's 10 millimeters thin or thick, which is also not the thinnest tablet, um, but still, the build quality is good when you can, when you can deal with this plastic feeling. Um, let me show you now why I really love this, uh, this connector that Samsung is using. And I tell you what, if Apple would have invented this connector, Right, and would have introduced this with a physical keyboard uh, as an accessory for the new iPad 4. Tim Cook would have talked about this for four minutes and what he would use would be fantastic, amazing, awesome, best in class, leading, incredible, fantastic, incredible, fantastic, amazing. You're getting my point, right? Let me, let me show you why. So uh, thumbs up for the Samsung engineers in Korea, right? You, you, it is just, you, you just can't miss it. So there we go. And then get rid of it again. Watch out, and win it again. Bang. Get rid, and bang. And then another little Apple term, it just works. It's magic. <laughs> so Samsung, you really need to work on on, on your um, rhetoric and marketing rhetoric uh, when it comes to comes to this and to, to point out um, these features because this is fantastic. This is the best docking connector I've ever seen in my life. And I tell you what, I've been almost seeing them all. Maybe not. Well, anyways, <laughs> this is this is just really, really good. Let's talk about um, the keyboard. It offers you a fantastic, really, I can, oh gosh, now I'm really in this Apple mode, right? It really offers you a great shaklet keyboard. Um, huge left and right sh uh, shift keys, um, great physical feedback from the keyboard. It is just great to type on it, right? But still, as you can see, I'm putting some pressure in the middle of the keyboard, it kind of bends a little bit, right? And this is something that I don't like about an accessory that actually costs you $129. And if you're adding this to the $649, which is uh, what you're paying for the Samsung Artif Smart PC, um, then we're ending up at almost $800. And for $800, you will also get a very, very fast Ultrabook with a Core i uh, ULV processor and with a very decent keyboard. So I think 
whether Samsung has to lower the price a little bit or definitely have to work they have to work on on the queue but still you know typing is great on it and what I also like it offers you another two um, what over here is um, again the PSU there's no integrated battery in there just to let you know right um, there's another USB 2.0 and also another USB here so you can easily connect a mouse to it or connect a USB memory stick or to, whatever is using a, a USB because I mean this is this is basically a PC okay so that's the docking station which I obviously just killed okay so um, that's the docking station so basically this is kind of a, 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 a netbook substitute right now but um, let's go back to the tablet mode again and let's get rid of this keyboard here and um, we need to talk about performance we need to talk about apps we need to talk about touch screen application usage scenarios what is pre-installed over here okay I'm getting you well, I'm getting back here now Yes, I'm also new to this Windows 8. Not really, but sometimes I'm still coming to, you know, some situations. I just don't know what to do. Okay, so um, this is a Taiwanese version. Don't want to confuse you with it. Um, it has some pre-installed apps on here. It comes with the S Note, which you might know from, um, well, that's an interesting version here. Um, let me just close this one and let's start it again which you might know already from the Galaxy Note 10.1 so this is just a little tool to doodle to draw to just leave notes which kind of makes sense when we're talking about uh, looking at this name yeah it works perfectly and of course you could also use here your S Pen you're getting it Okay, kind of interesting that it seems that the S note doesn't really like me. Um, to be honest, I think the performance of the S note application is nowhere near the performance of the one on the Galaxy Note 10.1, which is kind of weird. Uh, it has nothing to do that this is using a, a Android or a quad core processor. It has something to do with how they ported it over to Windows 8, and I think. Um, they weren't really taking care of this at all. Um, there's this S player, which is a substitute for Windows Media Player. Um, uh, different photos on here. Let's see what they, what kind of photos they took in this shop where I got this from. That's, by the way, always interesting. If you're buying a new device over here in Taiwan, you know, sometimes you're getting devices that they've been using already. Well, it's still new, right? But, but it, it might have been, you know, that they just unboxed it and just. Um, checked it out if, it, if, if everything is working and um, yeah and then sometimes you have these pictures on here so obviously I'm also not uh, not so familiar with this uh, with this gallery okay do I need to understand this ah okay yes so this is offering me a slideshow so I can swipe it well wonderful let's just close this here and um, go back to the front end <laughs> that makes sense there was a Jamie Oliver's recipe application which I absolutely like right it's beautiful mate. So you have all these fancy recipes. I would never cook here over here in Taiwan anyways, because it's way cheaper to just uh, go into the restaurant. And um, if you click on here, you would see uh, all the ingredients. And then it's just uh, walking you through the whole process of making this dish. Pretty cool, huh? But I think it's also available on Android and on iOS and whatnot. But I'm definitely suffering here with apps let me let me just see if i have any apps running on here nope okay what else do we have here of course we have bing and there are bing news um which is also really nice this miriam webster thing is also kind of news aggregator or content aggregator or something like that let's close it again and let me show you um, the bing news which i really like 
takes a while to load it up, but then you definitely um, you definitely have a gorgeous yeah magazine style news aggregator. Well, look at this, it's giving you all the top stories, right? And if you if you want to read a story, click on here, and then it takes you over to the story. It looks a little bit like yeah Google Currents or Zeit or this device seems to kill me right now. Maybe I should do a restart. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, maybe that helps. I'll be back in a second. Okay, here we are again. And I'm so not going to edit this out of the video because this is something that I actually faced for the first time. And I faced it. So there seems to be somehow a little problem with it. Um, you know what? Let's, let's try to do this right again. Oh no, let's, let's, let's just close this one. I've been using um, the news application. And let's see if I can finally go back. That was kind of annoying. Hold on a second. Here we go. Let's just use the... No, it was this technology story, this one here. And then I tried to go back. There we go. Now it works. So sorry about that. I have just no clue what kind of uh, problem this was. Let's go back to the front. And um, let's just close this application. Here we go. So I told you about the S player. Um, the S Note, and there's also S Gallery on here. I just something I know. I mean, come on, Windows is already offering you a gallery. Why do I need another one? Uh, it's. Let me see. Ah, look at this. There are even some more pictures here. <laughs> Interesting. All from this shop. Let's just go back and let's just close this. Um, yeah. It feels very responsive here uh, on the Windows 8 uh, modern UI. And while we're already here, let's just um, do some gaming tests. And let's start here with Battle Knight that I just downloaded. Well, what is this? What is this? Uh, oh, here, come, here comes the autofocus. Here we go. Uh, Infinity, Infinity Sword. Is this the name of the of this iOS game? It's kind of ripoff. Um, let's do Battle Crest, new game. Okay. I don't even know how to do this. Okay. Okay, I'm getting it. Yeah. Touch to dodge. Okay. Um, to be honest. Okay. Ah, okay, here we go. And could you please just tell me how I am finally attacking this opponent here? <laughs> Killing me completely. Okay, I can jump here. Am I just too stupid to play this game? Okay, guys, I tell you what, um, this might not be the best example to show the gaming performance of the Samsung out of Smart PC, um, but at least it was an example. Anyways, let's just kill this and try Soulcraft, because this is definitely easier for me to use because I've been using it already before. and. Um, on Android and on the iPad and hopefully they haven't changed anything regarding um, the steering. Oh yeah, this is looking good. So 
So this is something something in, in terms of graphic performance that is, you know, don't want to offend anyone, but almost on the same level as a, as a Tegra platform, or a tech, even a Tegra 3. Well, almost, right? Um, NVIDIA is definitely offering you some additional uh, special graphic effects, but it looks good, and it could definitely play it. So yeah, for casual gaming, it definitely offers you enough performance. Let's go to the desktop. Well, close this first, head over to the desktop here, and yeah, here we are. This looks like uh, a Windows desktop, and what we should do is, um, I would love to show you a little bit about um, the video performance. Let's start with the 720p of the movie that I have to watch tomorrow. Or maybe on Sunday. What's the sound? My dear Frodo, you asked me once if I had told you. So this is running 720p. My adventures. Well, I can honestly say I have told you the truth. There are no frame drops at all. You. Looks good. Great. It works. So, what about the 1080p version of it? I'm looking for someone to share in an adventure. Looking good. I can't just go running off into the blue. I am a bagging sweat of bagging. Allow me to introduce. No frame drops at all. And you know what? Um, Z2760 should be easily capable of running a 1080p uh, uh, movie, so that looks that looks great. Oh, love this song! I need to watch it. Come on, give us some action scenes here. That looks decent, huh? Ah, here we go. Now we're talking. Woohoo! Okay, so 1080p works perfectly. Uh, what else can I show you here? Um, what about, let me just open this one here. Let's go to the computer. Oops. Yeah, I tell you what, that's not so easy to handle anymore. Um, system rating isn't available right now. But what I can tell you right now, I've, I've had an overall rating of uh, 3.2. Um, the hardest came in at 5.8. Um, so this is, in my opinion, exactly what you can expect from, from an Intel Atom and 2800 netbook. And so it's definitely not the fastest platform out there, but it still can handle multitasking pretty well. I've been also installing some drawing applications here. Let me just search for something. Oh yeah, those problems when you don't have Okay, here we go. Let me just I have the color painter on here. Let's try this one. So this takes a while. Um, this also tells you that um, the SSD is definitely not the fastest one. I would expect, you know, just from my experiences, this would be on the level of, uh, of a fast hard disk drive. So a, a read speed of like 70 to 80 megabytes a second. This isn't fast at all. But still, you just can't tell uh, that this is using a slower SSD while, while you're just running these smaller laps. Okay, let me just close this one here and Oh yeah. Yeah. 
you see that? That works really nicely. Um, let's choose. Okay, I'll erase it a little bit. I'm sorry, I'm just not an artist. I just can't draw. I just can't paint. It's not going to change. Never. Let's just close this here. And uh, let me show you another program which is even more interesting. Yeah, I can try it out. And over here you can see that, that this is using a digitizer. Look at this. I'm not even touching it. So you have this kind of hover feature. Yes, I want to cancel. Um, let's search for... I think the name was called Auto Sketch. Oh gosh, I forgot about it. Sketchbook. That's the one. Okay, accepting the terms. Use trial. And um, let's just go for it. Because over here you can definitely see um, the different levels of uh, pressure sensitivity. So if I'm just slightly pressing on the screen, and if I just really pushing the stylus or pressing the stylus down, this is really nice. I love that. And again, if you're an artist, you're gonna absolutely adore this. Different colors, some green, some hello. So when you're into drawing, this S Pen, this Wacom digitizer, and this 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity are really kick ass. If you need a little bit more performance, you might want to go for the version that comes with a Core i processor, which will also be slightly more expensive, not only slightly, only a couple of hundred bucks. And um, it will also come with a fan then. So um, that is definitely uh, a difference because this is completely fanless and therefore silent. And this is something that I absolutely like. Um, let's do a little website test. Here we go. You know, this is something that is really annoying. So, hey, Microsoft, I know you want to you want us to use the modern UI on a tablet, but still, as soon as I'm going back to the desktop, I just want to make sure if I, if I need to fill out a form or any kind of field, right, could you just maybe auto pop up the keyboard? Or if anybody knows it, how to do this, you just leave me a comment. Maybe I'm just too stupid. Um, let's go to a website like The Verge, because they have a lot of graphics on there. And this is definitely a website that needs a little bit more horsepower. Plus, we can also check out uh, how fast um, the Internet Explorer is rendering on this Intel Atom platform. Hmm. <laughs> well, it takes a while to connect from Taiwan over to the US, obviously. Let's just double check that we are still connected. Okay, here we go. That looks pretty good. Oh, come on. I haven't. <laughs> Worldwide waiting. Okay, let's just try this out. Um, double tap to zoom, pinch to zoom, oh, that looks good. What about the accelerometer? Is it maybe locked? Okay, it was locked. I guess that's pretty decent, huh? So surfing the internet is no problem at all, even though that you're, uh, even though when you're running or when you're surfing on a, yeah, a little bit heavier side, 
like the one from The Verge. So definitely can handle this without any problems, and even though it's only using two gigabytes of RAM. So what's my verdict? What's, what's the result of this, uh, of this test here? Quite interesting concept that we've seen for the very first time about two, two and a half years ago uh, from ASUS. With the first, um, it wasn't even called Transformer at that time, but they kind of had this modular system as the first ones on the market, uh, which was running Android back in the days. Um, now an 11.6 inch device with an Intel Atom dual core processor running a full Windows 8. Um, I really like the device, especially because of this, uh, the stylus here, although, um, the S Pen and um, the Wacom Digitizer. But I'm not an artist, so basically what I would do is I would use this device as a tablet. As a mobile tablet, 11.6 inch, it's just too big for me. It is too heavy, it's like 750 grams, it's a little bit too thick, right? And as a netbook substitute for almost 800 US dollars with the keyboard, I think it's way overpriced. For $800, I would just suggest to get, even though that it doesn't come with a tablet, uh, uh, with this modular system then, maybe an Asus VivoBook because it also sports a touch screen and this will run on a Core i processor. But if you are into drawing and if you need this Wacom digitizer and if you need Windows because uh, Windows has all your painting and drawing and um, applications that you need from your desktop or notebook, this is definitely a device that you should consider. I haven't talked about the battery life of it. Um, during my test I almost got 10 hours of battery life out of it. While surfing the internet I set um, the brightness to 50%. So that's, that's very very decent and maybe this is also one reason that it's a little bit heavier because it sports a, a 31 watt hour battery. So that's a proper battery in there. Um, besides that, uh, still, I think it is a little bit too pricey. It is a nice device, yes, for me it is too pricey, too big, too heavy to become a substitute for uh, my 10 inch or for even for my uh, 7 inch tablets, which uh, let me just show you to give you an idea of how big this is. So uh, here we have a Galaxy Note which is a 5.5 inch device. Here we have a Google Nexus 7, which is a seven inch device. Uh, here we have the Google Nexus 10. Guess what? Yes, it's a 10 inch device. And here we have the first generation of the Apple iPad. So, you know what, decide for yourself. 11.6 inch is quite big. If you want to have a desktop uh, substitute with um, a, digi a Wacom digitizer, if you need a stylus, then this might be the platform to consider right now. So that's my review of the Samsung Artif Smart PC 500T. Jesus, now I know how to, not only know how to pronounce it, I will never ever forget this name at all. Uh, I'm Sasha from Mobile Geeks. If you like this very long review right now, just leave me a comment, not down here, but down here somewhere. Subscribe to our channel, give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you have any more questions, just let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Why?